Hey everybody, in this video, I wanna show you how I automate chores with Trello. Here's how. So I have this board that basically shows each list is a different frequency for the amount of chores that I wanna do. I don't really use daily, to be honest. Um, that kind of got uh, a little unnecessary, but I like the weekly, bi-weekly, monthly, bi-monthly, and quarterly stuff. And you can see I've got labels and due dates and things. I'm well overdue on doing some of these things. I've been traveling, so I'm a little bit behind on this, but here's how this works. So let's head to my automation. So first of all, I have a rule that when a card is added to sp the specific list, it will set a custom field called frequency to the number of days. And this is super important. You'll see why in a few rules later. But basically, if I add a card to the daily list, it's going to set a frequency to one. Weekly, set a frequency to two and all of, you know, and so on. And so these numbers are useful because I'm going to use them to... Um, reset the due date when I once I have completed a card. And so inside of each card, there's a button called did it. And inside that button, when I have completed a chore, I click it and it sets the date custom field from last done to right now. And then it sets the due date in X number of days, X being that frequency variable that we just set. And so if it's in the weekly list, it's gonna be seven days from now. It's in the bi-weekly list, it's gonna be 14 days from now. And then it's gonna move the card to the bottom of the list so it's out of the way, remove all the labels from the card and add the green complete label to the card. So that's a good way for me to be able to see like, okay, this was last done. When was this last done? Um, November 6th, it's due every 30 days. So we're doing it then it's been completed. I don't need to worry about it. And you know, that's super helpful because if I come in here and I need to figure out like what is actually important to do, I could use time to do, um, or I mean, I could also use due dates. It's a little bit redundant that I do both of those, but I just like the way it looks. So I thought that was kind of fun. So that's how that works. And then let me show you with the labels how they work. We have due date automation. So yeah, basically three days before a card um, is due and not a daily one, because like I said, that just kind of got out of hand. It's going to remove the complete label and add a yellow due soon label to the card. So that means if I'm feeling ahead of time, anything that has a yellow label, I know is on my radar that I need to do soon. Um, basically, once uh, something in daily is completed. I can just remove everything from there. And then on the day that a card not in daily is due, it's going to put that red label on there, just making it super, super obvious for me, making it very, very clear that I actually need to do that. Because sometimes it's easy to miss the that is not as aggressive as this. Um, and so anyways, so that's how I go about and do that. And the reason I really like this system, you might be like, why don't you just put these reminders on your calendar? It's because I would sometimes miss them on my calendar and I wouldn't know if I had actually done it or not. So I'd be like halfway through the day and be like, huh, like, did I actually replace the air filter? I see the calendar notification, but like, if I was traveling, did I move the calendar notification and do it later or did I not actually do it? And now I can actually see specifically when it was done. And that way, if I'm late, I can see like, oh, wow, like I haven't done it since then. Or I can be like, OK, like I actually did it a month ago. So it's not like it's been, you know, three months or whatever. So it's it's kind of helpful to see and keep track of that. And if you're a family, you could add a lot more fun stuff on this to gamify it. Right. And so you could, for instance, you could have cards that keep track of, you know, when Brittany does these things versus so and so does these things. And it could be like a good way to kind of gamify and see like if you're doing something with allowance, your kids could hit did it and it could track who was the person who was the user that clicked did it and credit that action to them and help keep track of like points or allowance or whatever you want to do with that. So I thought this was, again, a very like simple sort of use of automation, but a cool way to see some ways that you can do some pretty cool stuff with it. So let me know if you have any questions. Um, feel free to comment below. Uh, happy to get to those questions. I try to answer as quick as I can and would love for you to subscribe to this channel in my Trello newsletter. If you have any questions and love learning things about Trello, I will see you all later.